video walk on Wildwood DLX Park Model Travel Trailer. First things first, get your city water connection. That's where you're going to screw your hose on to. So, if your site provides water, that's where you're hooking it up to. If you're running that, you won't need to operate your pump or anything like that. All four corners have these stabilizer jacks. They're not meant to pick up the weight of it. So if you want it level, you'll use the tongue jack. And then as you're backing it in to get it level side and side, you'll back it in and on some blocks under your tires. But there'll be a crank. It's three quarter inch socket if you'd rather run it with a drill and a socket. Plenty of storage in here. This is going to be your dump station. So the one on your left is your black, the one on your right is your gray tank. Your gray is your shower and your sink water, the black is your toilet water. Um, I always tell people make sure these are absolutely closed before you take this cap off. Um, and I always do black first. Dump the black, let that get drained out, and then use the gray water to flush out your hose. Moving along. Another one of those stabilizers, like I said, there's one in all each corner. Your propane, you got access to it. Dual 30 pound cylinders, they are filled. And then over there you get your automatic changeover regulator. So wherever this is pointing, so it's pointing to this one, it's gonna pull from this tank first. And then once it's empty, if you would have that one to be on, it'll pull from that one next. Very simple, very easy. Your battery is underneath there. I always recommend if you can, taking your battery out in the winter. Um, throwing it somewhere warmer. Um, the winter's killer on these batteries. Awning, we have it out. It's kind of hard to explain. We're trying to film it one-handed. But when you're ready to close it, and it's definitely good to have a helper to do it one-handed. Hold this with one end. Make sure you're holding it. Then you flip this. It's right there. That way. It'll start rolling up. There'll be a lot of spring tension. That's why you need to hold on to that. And as it's rolling up, guide it in. Try to keep this in the middle. You can see where it gets rolled up. So you'll be able to have access to this once it's rolled up. If it's to the side like this and you have it rolled up, you have to unroll the two by hand until you can get access to this. You use this right here to hook onto that to pull it out. So to pulling it out, it's just the opposite. It'll be in. You unlock it from these. You just pinch them, the arms will unlock. Do the same on the other side. Then you would flip this switch over. Since it'd be up there, you would use your rod. Flip it over, hook it onto here, and you could pull your awning out like this. Now this is as, as it goes by default. You can raise and lower each end. You grab this, we can't, because it's forklifts in the way, but you can raise it. You can see where it engages on here on the track there and you could also slide this up right here locks into position there you can raise it up lock it as high as lock this as high as you want and then tighten this down that'll give it some support and then to undo those you just unhook it pull it down just like that you can also once it's all hooked up and this is extended out. You can undo this from here, just right there. Swing these down and then you can stake them into the ground. So we'll go one by one. So go back to the back again. Cable inlet, satellite inlet. So if you have a portable satellite, you can hook it to there. If your spot provides cable, hook it through here. 30 amp short cord, this is your short cord, it comes with it. it. Pushes in a twist to lock, and there's also this thing you can screw on to ensure it's locked. Do one last little look around, make sure we didn't forget nothing. There's a spot over here for some information. 
Get your VIN, VIN there. Tire pressure 65 psi and then tire size. Keep your t keep your tires at that pressure. Don't do what your tire says. Do what those say. All right. So then back to this side with more to be covered. Water heater. So it's all set up for you folks to use it. But when you, I always recommend draining it after every. After every trip, if you're not going to be there for a couple of days, the water sits in there, gets stagnant. So you take that plug out. It's an inch and a sixteenth is your socket size. Before you take that plug out, crack your pressure relief like that. Water will come out. Everything's okay to get wet. Once it stops coming out, snap it closed. Then you can take that plug out. If you neglect to do that, you're going to get a bath. And if you've been running your water heater, you're going to get a hot bath. And that's no good. Vent for your range hoods. If you're cooking on your range and you want your fan running for your range hood, open that up. That'll allow the flap to swing freely. I'm a little short to do it, but once these are open and the fan's running, it'll push the flap out of the way, allowing the gases somewhere to go. Furnace. Only thing you folks will have to do to that is just keep it clean. Keep it clean in here. Um, they make screens you can put on that, and that's fine. They don't recommend you run them with the screens on, but as far as uh, storage and uh, travel, it's good to keep any debris out of in there. Outdoor outlet. It's GFCI protected. All your GFCIs are on the same circuit. So if this one wanted to trip, all the other ones would trip as well. Fresh water fill. So if you are dry camping, you can fill your onboard tank and use your pump to run off of that tank. But if you're at a permanent spot um, or if your site has water, you'll hook it up through the water there. There's no need to fill your tank up. And then to drain it, is that valve right there. That pretty much it covers it for the outside, so we'll head on into the inside. Sliding door, super nice. So we'll start right to the left of when you come in. Got your monitoring panel. So you got porch light, ceiling light. Porch light will be the little amber light outside. Water pump, if you are going to use your water heater, water, sorry, water um, from your fresh tank, you need your water pump on. Unless you're using your city, you don't need your pump on. Here you can monitor your your uh, your battery, your fresh, black, gray. And, uh, two blacks, a gray, and a galley. This one's only going to have a black and a gray. I did not see a galley tank. Um, but when we leave... And to conclude the tour, I will, we will double check because a lot of times the kitchen sink is on its own tank. But you push that and it reads up and it reads there. So when it's full, you'll, you'll be able to see that's full battery, so it says full. The fresh is empty, so it'll say empty. Pretty easy. Slide out controls. This controls both your slide outs. So it'll do um, both of them at the same time, in and out. Just remember when you're closing that slide in there, make sure that bedroom door is closed so you might end up having it get caught then you have extra lights I believe that is an outside light that's another porch light and the ceiling light turns on and off these main lights in there the hall light and the slide lights are on their own switch we'll quickly go over here you have a spot for a tv a little entertain entertainment area you see have a auxiliary satellite so if you're hooked to this satellite hook you hook your tv there tv if you're hooked through the cable you hook it to here so um, cable here, satellite there. This is also your antenna one too. So if you're running your antenna, your TV off your antenna, make sure this little green light is on, this button is on. Turn it off, that's off. Um, that's your booster. You want your booster to be on when you're running cable or satellite. Or antenna. My bad. Um, AV ports. So you can plug your TV into there. Play, um, use this as a DVD player. So you can turn it on. You can pause, play, throw your DVDs in there. And then you can also, let's see, auxiliary. Hit auxiliary. I'll have your phone through here. You can have your phone plugged in, listen to your own music. Save different zones. Zone B A is inside. Zone B is the outside. Yep. And then zone B is unused. Oh, zone B. 
is in here. Zone A is here. Zone C is outside. And then you have, again, auxiliary. You do AM, FM. You just swap through USB. This is not having actually yep. USB port right there. So you can plug your phone in USB and do that, or disc if you have a CD or DVD player in there. But you have to have your TV hooked up through those to run your DVD in there. There's an awning crank I was showing you. Couch turns into a bed. Remove those cushions. It's a traditional pull-out bed. Same deal, I believe, with this one. Yep. So you have spots for lots of extra guests. Got some bar stools you can have up next to this table. So you have a switch there. That's your switch for your light for there. And then you can turn on and off your fan on that from the little pull strings. Another GFCI outlet. Like I said, all your GFCIs are on the same circuit. That one would be trip. They're all going to trip. Microwave. It's only going to work when you're plugged in. The fan over here with the light. Like I said, if you're going to use this fan when you're cooking, make sure you have that flap on the outside open. Cooktop, nice folding cooktop. This will kind of act as a backsplash once it's open. And then the light, you just turn the light. And then you twist it to spark it, just like that. Like all of them. Twist. Oven's a little different. You push and hold on pilot. Then you have to actually go in there and you can kind of see it. There's a pilot you have to light. You have to use a barbecue lighter or a match to light that pilot. Once the pilot is lit, you can turn it from pilot on to whatever temperature. And then it'll cycle the oven on and off to regulate that temperature. If you know you're going to use it again in a few hours, you can turn it to pilot on. That shuts the burners off, but it leaves that pilot on so you don't have to relight it again. Uh, but however, I always recommend before you go to bed, turning your pilot off. You don't want to lit pilot overnight. Uh, who knows what could happen. Fridge, residential fridge. This is only going to work when you're plugged in. Yeah. Got temperature controls for your freezer. A nice, spacious fridge. And then there's a little room around it if you wish to up, up, upgrade to a, a larger residential fridge. You could. Breaker box. It's got all your breakers for your 120 volt appliances, all your fuses for your 12 volt. Um, so you got some 15s, uh, 20s, and a 3, and it looks like 240s. So I always recommend keeping a box of spare fuses just in case. Um, some of them might be for your slide and for different lights, different zones. So that'll keep you from being out with, without power for a while. And then it, all of these lights in here, you can turn on and off from there. That one right there. And the same deal for this one over here. All your chairs have storage underneath, good for placemats or table settings. A secret storage. Light switch for the light in the hallway. Thermostat, so you turn it on, it'll ask auto, high or low. That's just your fan setting, so auto is going to allow it to cycle on and off whether you're doing your AC or your furnace. Um, and then high or low is going to allow it to stay on and not cycle off at different fan speeds. Hit it again, you go through cool, cools your AC, obviously, and that goes all the way down to 55. Again, your AC won't work if you're not plugged in. And then your furnace goes all the way to, let's see, I believe 90. Yep, 90. Hit the furnace, the furnace will turn on. You go get it'll get once it hits 90, if you have it on auto, it'll turn off. It'll be very hot in here if you get it to 90, but if you like it that hot, you can certainly do that. But above me, smoke alarm uses your standard 9 volt batteries. So if you start getting low voltage chirps, it's time to replace the battery. And then your antenna, so you crank this up right here. You go all the way up, then you'll be able to pull this down and turn it. If you turn it to adjust it and these end up not being aligned, before you lower it, you have to get these two triangles to be aligned before it is able to lower all the way. There's a little cradle on the roof that it sits in and that allows it to stay lined up.
We're snaking in through the bathroom here. Very spacious bathroom. Switch for the fan is, is your right light switch. The one on the left is your lights in here. And this is what raises and lowers your fan back. This knob. So lefty, it lowers it, right opens it. Resettable GFCI. That's if any of your GFCIs would outlets would have tripped, this is the outlet you come in and reset it at. Nice big shower. Let's see if we can't get this done one-handed. There we go. Plenty of headroom. And then standard shower, hot and cold. And then travel clip right there. If you're traveling, make sure that's locked to keep these from moving around a bunch. Toilet, very simple. As long as you're pushing this pedal down here, the toilet's going to keep flushing. <gasps> so if you're trying to get some anything stuck on the side or not wondering why it hasn't stopped flushing, it's because you keep holding it down. So not a whole heck of a lot in the bathroom. Back through here to the bedroom. Back through here. You can you can get in, in and out from the bedroom from the inside. And then light switches up there. So you got light switches. So it's on and off the lights, and then the one next to it is an outdoor light. So let's turn these lights back on. You have a spot for another TV here. You hook it in to there, so there's your cable outlet and your outlet right there. You have another light above here, so you could use this as like a vanity or a makeup station or to get ready in the morning. Plenty of storage on either side. The slide out, the bed has an outlet on either side, and then a main light in the middle, and then two like reading lights for each person. And then plenty of storage in here. Yep, with a with a uh, like a coat rack, clothes rack. Your side does lift up. Plenty of storage. This is access to that one storage compartment that was outside. And that's pretty much it for the bedroom. You do have on either side kind of like a little cubby to keep your phone at night or um, tissues or something. So that's pretty much it for the bedroom. And that's pretty much it for the interior portion of our tour. So we will go back out and double check on that uh, that drain, see if there's another one. We'll let you know for sure if you guys have two gray tanks or not. Watch yourself when you're going around the corner. You can bop your head on the awning if you're not too careful. So, so here's the other ones. Let's double check over there. Nope. So you just have one gray and one black tank. So that answers that qu question. And that concludes the tour of your Wildwood DLX.